Okay, so let's talk about the independent samples ANOVA versus the repeated measures ANOVA. They both have the same start. Uh, they have the same hypothesis. Not only that, but they both have the same idea of taking all the variance in our sample and then breaking it down into component parts. Now, when we talk about all the variance in our sample, we really mean what is our sum of squares total? What is the total um, amount of variability away from the grand mean in our entire data set? And uh, we could easily, just from the sentence, we could figure out what the formula for this would be. This should be something like um, the variability of all, every single one of our data points, right, minus the grand mean, which we signify with two uh, bars, so double bar, squared, right? And how does the sigma know to do this for every single data point, not just the data points in one sample? Well, the way it knows to do that is because this should say n total. So this is going to go through every single data point um, in every single sample and uh, subtract, get the distance from uh, the grand mean, and then square that distance, and then add those distances all up, squared distances all up. Okay, so that's the same idea to begin with. Now we're going to take this SS total and break it down into its component parts. Now in independent samples, what we see is that all of the, all of the, um, all of the variability that we're uh, unable to explain lies within the group. All of the variability that we uh, are very interested in that is between the groups, right? And so in independent samples, the story becomes um, SS total is, is a conglomeration. It's, it's a, it's, when you split it up into its parts, you see that it's made up of the sum of squares within the groups, inside of the groups, and the sum of squares between the groups added up. Right? And because of that, the F statistic here becomes the, uh, the variability, I'm sorry, the variance between over the variance within. And obviously each of these variances correspond to, the, uh, to its own sum of squares. Now, in a repeated measures ANOVA, we're going to be talking about something slightly different because now we have these linked examples, uh, linked data, right? So here, the data is independent. These samples are independent. They're not linked to each other in any way. But here, these samples are actually linked to each other either by virtue of being made from the same subject or the same class produced it or, or something about these scores. They're linked to each other, right? So not only is there variability uh, across the groups, just like before, so sort of across, between the groups, right? And variability within the group but now we have a new kind of variability. We have this variability caused by these different, uh, these different linkages. These all are different from each other, but maybe similar across, right? So the person who owns a digital camera, they might just have an enormous number of photos all across the board. The person who doesn't have a digital camera or not even a smartphone might have a low number of photos across the board, right? So there are those things that we call, uh, often are called individual differences. Those are differences that we, uh, we can actually mathematically quantify, right? We could actually explain where it is, but we're not actually interested in it in this, uh, in this study. We're really interested in this between group difference. But this isn't all. Once you've taken out this individual uh, variability, there's still some residual uh, within group variability left over. And so, that's, that's really stuff we cannot explain. It's not caused by the individual differences. It's um, not because it's between groups. It's just within group uh, differences. So in repeated measures, 
the sum of squares total actually breaks down slightly differently. Even though it's still, um, it's still this idea of breaking down uh, the sum of squares total, now it actually splits up into sum of squares subject, right? These individual links, that's the yellow part, plus the sum of squares within, just like before, except now we call it residual. Because this, we've taken out the, sum, uh, the variability that comes from the individual differences. Um, and so because of that, there's, there's only a, a leftover. And so because of that, we call it residual, which is like the word leftover. And of course, the sum of squares between, which is what we're actually very interested in. All right, so just to recap, this is something that we could explain, however, we're not interested in. This is something we cannot explain, and this is something we are very interested in. So our F statistic will actually become our variability between divided by our variability residual. And in fact, we just want to take this guy out of the equation. We want him to, um, out of the equation of f. So f, um, it doesn't count the variability from the subjects or individual difference. Uh, they're not interested in that. Okay. So if I wanted to show you this in a picture, here's what I would show you.